So, mini Chinese. We just went over the normal low Chinese Fuseki. So, what happens when our opponent gets mini Chinese? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, I'm experimenting with uh, recording my lectures. I found a very easy way to do it. I have somewhere that I can upload them if I want. And depending on the quality, I'm going to see if I really want to do that or not. Anyway, so what do we do here? I think it's pretty safe to say we know what we don't want to do. What don't we want to play here is white. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Basilican. We really, really don't want to play B, uh, P3 here. Because if we play B, then it's just as bad as we literally just went over. Okay, yes, thank you. We don't want to play on A1 either. That is true. So that raises the question, if we don't want to play that, what do we want to play? And it looks like we are already getting suggestions here. We are getting R10. That's fairly common, yes. That's actually the most common move you can make. R14. Playable too. That is also playable. Actually, that is a very common misconception there, dog tech. I mean, everything that we're talking about right now is fairly common, and yet it can be a lot of fun. Even something like A, which is probably the most common response I can think of. Because black has so many different ways, especially when they don't know it. That can be fun too, that's true, I suppose. But black has a lot of different ways to go ahead and respond to this. I mean, let's see, you can probably get them before I even mention any of them. Do you guys know any responses here? Let's see, Q9, yep, that's a response. What else do we have? R8, uh, yes, that is a response. So we today likes um, R12, that's a response. Mm -hmm. Alright, yes, R13, right, that's a dove response. Alright, take care. But yes, everything that you've mentioned is a valid response. Tanuki. <laughs> everything that you've mentioned is a valid response. I would again not recommend playing elsewhere. I would treat this as an approach. Well, I wouldn't treat it as an approach. Rather, I would treat it as an opportunity. Black has developed a framework on the bottom. He wants to expand this framework. And lo and behold, White has just given him, quite rightfully, a brand new stone at R10 to either lean against or push in one direction in an effort to expand what he's trying to build. Uh, now, again, like I said, all of these are valid responses. I'd pick A or B. Yep, all these are valid responses. It just depends on how you want to develop the board. C and D do, do seem a little bit odd. They require a little bit more reading. Uh, for example, let's go with them since they do seem a little bit strange to you guys. Let's say you push your opponent closer towards your enclosure, or your uh, corner, sorry, not enclosure. Well, how can we possibly develop this position when we've just pushed them there? Surely the only thing we can do now is enclose at A. Or, we can play Q6. That is true. Uh, do you know the other move that we can play? Q5. 
because there are two very uh, popular moves here. One is Q6. Oh wait, someone already said it. Uh, curvature said Q9, then potentially Q6. There is. I'm going to go over both of those because that those two moves don't always go together, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, let's see. This one is fairly um, is fairly simple. Just as we saw in the low Chinese, we can try and lean against white stones here in an effort to try and build up a very large area for ourselves. Very similar variation. White gets a little bit of a base, and black gets to expand on the framework that he wanted to build. However, as Curvature mentioned, you can try and keep white lower by throwing by uh, forcing him to connect on the third line, and then forcing him to try to kill off that stone. However, white doesn't have to submit that way. So if you do play this, you should be aware that white does have the opportunity to go ahead and jump out here instead. And now we have the problem where if you decide to go ahead and split him apart, he gets to approach you. Obviously this will be a bit bad because now we can't play Jiseki. We're forced to keep making him stronger and stronger while our corner is enclosed. Not only is our corner being enclosed, but A isn't even completely dead yet either. So this can get very, very tricky. This is one of those instances where, in an effort to avoid this position and not have to worry about white coming back to life at A, not having to worry about reinforcing these two stones on the bottom that are now being sandwiched between white's strength, this is an instance where we would say, okay, fine, I'm going to go ahead and enclose because I don't want you building that wall. Now, does that mean that white has now forced black into an enclosure with an extension? That which we know how to reduce later on? Sure, of course it does. But it also means that you've got Sente out of this because white has to go back and protect, otherwise this is going to be separated later on. Well, no, scratch that. This would be separated immediately, because it's huge. Having these two weak positions right in the middle of all of black strength would be just astronomical. You couldn't ask for anything better than having two weak groups right in the center of where you're strong. Um, let's see... Not always bad to be forced somewhere, that's true. Uh, what else do we see here? Q9, better at Q8. Okay, what was that? Um, Q9, better here. If you were going... Oh, not early. Um, I'm not certain where you meant then. You meant better position for white because black has the wrong stone. Okay, now I'm really confused. You say that... You can move stone later. Q8 is a normal test. In which variation? After P7? Okay, so this, this... And then here? If black could replace it. Oh, I see. You're talking about the probe itself. Um, yes, ideally, the probe would be a little bit better off at... Uh, here's what he's talking about. I'll go ahead and show it. What he's referring to is another common position. And let's go ahead and make this a lot simpler. Um, 
go ahead and I guess give black an enclosure, commonly seen, and then something like this. No, wait, I'm completely wrong. Sorry, my bad. Let's go ahead and give it to him this way then. There we are. This is what he's referring to. If we were going to probe White's three stones, we would want to do it at uh, Q7, ideally, because we're threatening two different things. We're threatening to cut through in both directions. This general shape is uh, what he's referring to. Now the real test, can I actually get back to where I was? Uh, I'm talking about this one. Alright, that's pretty much where we were. Um, hmm. It's better for white in terms that black doesn't have a very good follow-up to cut through white stones anymore. Uh, I will grant you that. But it's not that bad for black, because he has Sente to play large moves. He can turn around and go ahead and make a bit of a framework here again on the top, even though the one on the bottom was destroyed. Or he can go ahead and keep making territory and see about... Well, no, this is a bit small. He probably wouldn't play this. That'd be a bit too over-concentrated, I think. Too early in the game. So yeah, I could take another large move up top, because he gets Sente, since white has to protect. Uh, let's see here. So that covers that variation. D is pretty much... Um, that wasn't a uh, double wing. It was a bit strange seeing that move at R12, and I'm about to go over that in a second, so one moment. And we can also see uh, D instead of C for reasons that Otake just mentioned. If we play the exact same variation, then our position's a bit easier to handle here as blacks because we have a large knight with an, uh, with an extension. Which is okay. If we played a large knight, a move like that is what we want. Reason being, it's played typically for influence, and now uh, we are using that influence with our very first move. So black wouldn't be opposed to this. Of course, C can be a bit more severe, but D can give you a bit of a more of a familiar position to handle if you get Sente to expand along the top. But, like I mentioned, there are a lot of different responses here, and A and B are also some of the responses, though Basilican says, what if white invaded after the R12 invasion? Um, R12 invasion... Oh, I see what you mean. Um, what? Oh, variation, sorry. I see what you mean by that. Uh, respond here. Alright, can you answer your own question? There's a very obvious move here, in light of the move that Black just played. Black has just told you where his ambitions lie with that move. So where do you think Black's going to play? Easy response. Can black can uh, white break out? Sure. Why not? Go ahead, break out. But is black going to be unhappy with this? Of course not. This is exactly what he wanted. K17 just told us he was interested in the top, and now white just gave him uh, a bit more strength into developing it. So, 
Black ought to be happy with this. So yeah, seems troublesome. Uh, higher? You mean at what? Q14? Oh, Q14 is just uh, typically. I'm gonna go ahead and say a mistake. Because now the question is, how are you actually going to handle this stone? I mean, we can't actually go out and play this variation, can we? Uh, very much so, yes. Very flimsy. Because if we attach to it, it might not kill it. Sadly enough, it might not die. And even if it does, let's assume that's dead, um, let's go ahead and pass and make that nice and strong. Well, we can also think about endgame. And we can see a lot of that territory that White just tried to develop disappear. That's why I don't like that particular Joseki. That endgame is killer. So let's go ahead and back up, uh, look at different variation. Like I mentioned, A and B are also quite common here. So let's talk about them. Uh, B is straightforward. B just says, I'm going to push you to my corner, I'm going to probably throw in to attack you, and this variation is probably one that you've seen many times. White's going to jump out, black's going to enclose, because he does not want his corner being enclosed, and then A and B are typically going to be me eye. I'll talk about that uh, as well, uh, Jowser. So this is also a very normal variation, Compl almost completely devoid of complications. So let's talk about one that's a bit more complicated. Sure, go ahead, I don't mind. So what happens if Black decides to go ahead and shoulder hit this stone instead? Question is, Possible, most possible, I would say, of uh, any thing that you can decide. The question is, what is Black trying to get? And we can easily see what Black's trying to get. If you decide to go ahead and um, respond to the stone with uh, R9, which is a quite a normal idea, really. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find one that works uh, better than this. Then it seems immediately that black is trying to develop a huge wall spanning almost half the board in order to develop his framework. So instantly we can see the purpose behind the shoulder hit. He's just looking to develop. One thing he's not looking to do, which is a common mistake that I see in some of my students, is this is not in any way designed to kill R10. This is recognizing that R10 is going to get strong. It's going to live. And all you're doing is really trying to get stronger as well in order to develop. We see this tactic a lot when someone has, let's say, a weak group running here and we will shoulder hit their connection in order to cut them off because if they respond, they only hurt themselves. Here we see it simply to develop the framework that's already on the board. So, let's see, was it this one? No, shoot, this one. No, shoot. I will just click you again then. So we have the shoulder hits, we're going to probably go ahead and back off, and now uh, there's a few things that we can see here. If white pushes again, again, very normal, black's going to hane, which immediately raises a very common bad variation. That being, well, what happens if white cuts? 
The Q players are always afraid of that little cut, and they always love taking advantage of them immediately. So what happens if white cuts? Can anyone tell me? Is this something to fear? Should we worry about it? Extend what where? Okay, we're getting some uh, interesting ideas. R6. We can play R6. That seems like a very interesting one. However, I will go ahead and say that someone said Atari. No, we don't want to Atari that stone. Reason being, if we simply extend, then White has to decide all by himself how he's going to handle these two stones. White hasn't been made stronger. If we Atari right now, we've just made one of those stones stronger. I suppose in this case it's still playable. We're forcing white, or trying to force white, to make the cutting stone stronger while we get strength. But I don't think I would do that. I think I would be content simply by extending. And if white wanted to actually try and uh, play something here, I would simply respond in kind. Because both moves are being attacked right now. If, for example, white says, oh no, I need a base, well then that's one move from being surrounded. And if white says, no, I need to help my cutting stones get to safety, well then what happens to his three? Very easy to handle. It's simply having two start. We simply have two weak groups here, and we're going to keep ourselves nice and strong. And above all else, we're going to keep the separated. Can B play S7 instead of R6? That's probably what I would play. I would consider playing S7 because that's also undercutting uh, the three stones. It's not like we have to worry about this being captured, because we have R4 there helping us. I mean, there's some forcing moves here. I won't say that there aren't, but I wouldn't really be worried about them. I mean, even this might get cut through. Though, secondary reading might show that to be a colossally bad idea. Hmm. Yep, 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 yep. We might just not want to do that one. That is bound to not make us happy. Alright, fair enough. Bad idea. Double Hane, though, can serve our purpose as well. Still has to survive on both locations. I was just being greedy for a moment there. Alright. Uh, R3 being too passive. R3. Um... R3 is a nice strong move. Doesn't leave behind a much Aji for White to go after. If he fixes his position now, we don't have to protect. We have Sente, we can go attacking. That'd be a good idea. So I no, I wouldn't say it's too passive. Alright, so if cutting's bad, then what do we do? Well, we have choices. Um, one choice, simply extend. Very, very common choice. Now that, our, we, now that we have a base, we can go back and cut. Which is also why Black's going to protect himself. That way, if White still cuts, we can immediately respond by protecting our Q9 stones. At this point, White will probably fix his shape, I would assume. 
Black probably wouldn't want to get himself surrounded, so we'd probably respond with O seventeen. Make sure that uh, the corner's fine. And from here, it's really hard to say. Is playing under really that good here? You mean S seven, Jazzer? Well, you could play this way, but it leaves a little bit more Aji. I wouldn't want to play this way because what happens if white throws back here later on? I have to keep in mind that moves like this or this are threatening to link under. So I have to be very careful in how I respond to, say, the cross cut. Because all white needs to get is a move at either A and B, and suddenly he's threatening to do multiple things. So I wouldn't want that Aji lingering around. This, I'm nice and solid in the corner. I know where my weakness is coming from. It's coming from the cut. Um, Kinhana, yes. However, you, uh, you guys keep saying, go ahead and Hane, go ahead and Hane at uh, Q10, I assume. Kalitseki says white Q10. This... I would recommend, to keep things simple, just go ahead and extend. At your level, if you Hane, if you make this little turn here, then chances are your opponent's going to protect his cut point. And then you can go back and make a base, and you'll be very, very happy with this result. However, there are complications here for you uh, stronger players. Your opponent might have studied this variation before, and he might pincer you. Now we've got a problem. We can't make an adequate base. We have to fight this will definitely lead to a complicated variation. Now, in the event you actually find yourself... Mm, it does, and it doesn't. If you simply go ahead and cut, now we're probably actually going to go ahead and Atari it. Playing this variation. And from here, we do have a fight on our hands, but we have two separate weak groups. That eh, could be a problem. Uh, the normal variation actually uh, is probably not something that anyone here would be able to read on their own. We usually see the attachment threatening to live in that corner, which black shouldn't want to happen. So he's going to respond. White attaches, because he's created Aji. We can't descend, otherwise we're going to lose stones. Because ladder's not favorable for uh, black. So we're going to respond. And from here, things get really fun. This is actually the normal variation. There's a lot of groups that are unsettled. I mean, white's unsettled on the bottom, but black's unsettled in the middle because his stones have been cut off. Chances are white's going to be fine on the right-hand side. Uh, white is, or er, yeah, but black is fine in the corner, and he's strengthening the left. It's just a slight problem that all of this is so unsettled. So, that is why we are typically seeing not the seemingly common move at Q10. Because pros realized, oh, we don't actually have to connect this yet. 
we can turn this into a fight. So to avoid that fight, we can just go ahead and play the extension. A lot easier on everyone involved. White gets to make good shape here. Black still has weaknesses. It's still very much an even game. No crazy fights have uh, sprung up yet. Um, yeah, both sides are looking to expand or reduce. Both sides are looking at that cut point and how we're going to handle a newly created group there. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, okay, we went over that variation, we went over that variation. Uh, I must use my head. Um, what was that one? Oh, there is one thing that I forgot to mention. There was a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a fun variation that was played in one professional game against uh, Yisidol. We saw... Uh, let's see, it was this one, I believe? His opponent responded uh, with this, trying to get him to defend, so he, so Black could shoulder hit and play the extension, or an expand, rather, just like we've seen. He jumped, and Black decided that he was going to be clever. He wasn't going to simply enclose like White wanted him to do like Lee Sedol wanted him to do. He decided to probe first, thinking that was going to be defense enough, and then also get to cut. So he played rather aggressively here against Lee Sedol. He decided that P7 just wasn't going to be enough, that it was slow, and he's going to cut him to pieces. So what wound up happening is exactly what I just mentioned. Just went ahead and surrounded him. And from there, there's really not much you can do. I mean, you can't really push out with P6. You can only really defend your corner. Which was fine for him. Had no problem uh, doing that, because there's still a weakness. Whoops. Uh, there's still a few weaknesses here. I mean, this can be cut. So, Black found himself responding. Make sure that cut doesn't uh, work. So, White just connected. Black had to take care of R10. At which point, that opened up Ysidol to go on the attacking spree hurting these two stones that are now sandwiched between uh, two strong groups. Yes, that went very well. Uh, you said all one by five points. I think that's a compliment. Thank you, Element C. So that's something that I meant to uh, show earlier, slip my mind. Uh, let's see, is there anything else to go over that I wanted to go over? Hmm. Well, actually, let me ask uh, this question. Is there anything that you guys see in your games that I haven't gone over yet? Because this is all well and good for those who actually know how to respond and no proper variations, but in your games you might uh, see all manner of stuff that I don't see anymore. Alright, so you're seeing... I'm not sure what Calm is asking. He's asking about a lot. Oh, I just meant, I don't mean something you see a lot, necessarily. Just something that uh, pops up from time to time. Or... Alright, 
we're seeing micro. I can go over micro a little bit, I guess. Um, what else are we seeing? White playing Chinese. Whether white or black is playing, the same thing generally replies. You know how to... You should have an idea on how to handle it, what they're trying to force you to do. Oh, a lot of things not covered here. Well, go ahead and speak up, and we'll go over them. Uh, Slardy. Didn't see you there. Hello. I actually have met him in person. He says, response to F3 at P4. All right, in response to F3 at P4. Ah, you see... Yeah, this is classic. Players that don't like going against the Chinese Fuseki will approach you. They know that if they back off, they're inviting the mini Chinese, they're inviting the micro Chinese nowadays, they're inviting enclosures, they're inviting all sorts of strategy that black can employ. So some players will go on the offensive immediately and approach you instead. Their idea of combating the Chinese Fuseki? Not letting you develop it. Not letting you play it. Um, basically, there's really two methods of thought here. Well, yeah, there's two, me two methods of thought. Um, that's one. Double up. Well, fine. Three. You can double approach, I guess. Um, what I usually like playing, I probably should get out of the habit of doing this. I usually take a bit of a Li Cheng Ho approach and give my opponent exactly what he wants. I give him nice influence to attack my stone. Any idea why I would do that? Because I'm a nice guy, alright. That's possible. Play a variation to make my stone live? Nope. I play this specifically with the intention of getting F3 killed. See, there's a little bit of a danger whenever your opponent actually tells you where you're going to make all your territory from. The minute he says, Alright, the bottom... It's going to be mine. Okay, you can make it his. He's got to kill off A. He's got to defend against evasions at B. Let's see how he's going to do that. So I would reapproach, as Basilicon has just mentioned. Yes, I would double approach. And I'd go ahead and reapproach. Uh, most commonly, I see the attachment. Now, this certainly looks like it's getting large. Uh, no, not c3. I would probably play... I usually uh, attach here. And then my opponent typically goes ahead and denies me the corner, which is obvious enough. I get a base. And here is the part where a lot of weaker players make mistakes. Because they get greedy. They see everything I'm trying to give them, and they just want to build it up immediately. I mean, just look at this huge area here go ahead and extend to the 7th line, and we're just rolling in territory. Well, good theory, bad practice. Because right now, he has done nothing, <laughs> as Kamori has rightly mentioned, what territory? Exactly. It'd be tempting to look at this and think it's territory, but he's done nothing to prevent A from running out or making a nuisance of itself done nothing to prevent me from invading at B. So if I want to, I can actually just run straight out here. If that was my intention, I could do so. If I want to invade at B first, that would make it even more severe, and he'd have to decide how this is going to be handled, because I'm one move away from connecting up my stones. So if he keeps being greedy and saying, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, then just live there casually. So there's so much Aji back here, this play doesn't make much sense. It looks impressive, but you really need to take care of the F3 stone. 
So I'm going to get sente. I'm going to get sente, and A can still be played. And real quickly, if I do play A later, let's just go ahead and uh, do it now for the sake of demonstration. He'd have two options. One, let me connect, which I would obviously be happy about, or fight me, and watch as I casually live in your area. Really nothing easier than doing that. Could not be any more simple to make a live group back here than with this shape. So I don't mind doing that. I can just play territorially here and go ahead and reduce him. But that might not be everyone's style. And truthfully, I'm getting tired of playing that way, so I've been pincering a bit more in my, late, in my uh, recent games. And with that, you might want to be careful. What you probably want to do is, I would pincer wide. Uh, I'm not certain if that's a good idea. I'd probably go no closer than the two-space high, uh, high pincer. That way, I'm lending some strength to my F3 stone as well. Yes, I'd be wanting to try and help F3 a bit while putting some pressure on P4. That way, this becomes difficult for White. He can't, for example, simply say, okay, I'm going to get uh, some influence here, and go back and attack. Because so I've got influence, I've got a wall, I can use that to attack stuff. Well, trouble is, he's pincered too now. So this is still a very complicated variation for him. Uh, overall, this would probably be bad direction for white. This seems too difficult to handle. Mm, how would we respond to this? Difficult, difficult, difficult. I mean, we don't have to worry too much about uh, about black, for example. Um, let's cut him off for a minute here. We know that we can still get a base, however, one that we... That's, eh, not the best of shape, but we can live here still. So we just need to make sure that our pincering stone doesn't die, or get surrounded, or become too weak. Mmm... I wasn't thinking about K5 so much as L5. Take care, Element C. You have to be careful with a move like K5. You're leaving the cut in place, since you've just made the small knight. And that could be bad for you. Especially since, even in this variation, it doesn't work. Uh, let's see, is there any specific variations that uh, you had in mind, uh, Slarty? Oh, I just hit my fingers on the desk. Um, Q7? Um, Q7 or... R5 for white, yeah. We usually play around M4 and Pensable. Mm, yeah. Well, it's always good to uh, strengthen your fighting skills. But you might just, uh, for a change, you might try actually playing the uh, P3 variation. You'll be surprised on how well that works. As long as you know there's Aji remaining and the uh, invasion that's still lingering there. A lot of players, even at low down level, tend to overlook those things, and they'll just try and uh, expand. Which makes the game, in my opinion, rather easy, because everything they just built up just vanishes. Um, but okay, you wanted... I'll get to that too in a minute. Let's see, you wanted Q7. Q7 invites a bit of a complicated Giuseppe. 
Um, <laughs> I could actually spend probably about a half an hour going over most of these variations. Uh, let's see. This, I would be tempted to just ignore. Would I respond to that? I don't know. I'm tempted to fix my stones. Because I know that uh, I can't be killed there in one move. I mean, this is the most severe that white can play against me. And I know I can still live. Yeah, P5 is Jaseki. Trouble is, we're also giving strength to our opponent right now, the minute we play this. So, if we really want to play this way, we can. But you might want to keep in mind... Yeah, I know. But keep in mind that uh, he's getting a wall here. Yes, I played this horribly wrong, I know, I know, I know. Uh, it's supposed to be here. And then if you continue with Joseki, then suddenly you find yourself in a worse position than you were at. So you have to be very, very careful about playing that attachment, because you're making the stone stronger that you really don't want to be. Which is why I was saying I'd be really tempted to just go ahead and ignore this. For interest's sake, how would the Q4 Jiseki play out here? Q4? I am not... Oh, this? Hmm. You're looking for this, Jiseki? Yeah. Suppose this one is playable. But we can see immediately that black's already getting stronger. So what is white going to what's white's hope here? Is white hoping to uh, what are some options here? Um oh, it's been forever since I saw this Joseki. See, there's the cut, and then that. I think this is one. I could be completely mistaken on the order. This is one possible Jaseki. But as you can see, Black's gotten a little bit more strength to uh, help out his F3 stone. No, White's not dead, he's just not going to connect. If you connect, then you're toast. But this Joseki, uh involves sacrificing those uh, stones. For influence. Typically when we play this as white, we're going to want, I don't know, something here to make it worthwhile. Some sort of influence to make uh, the wall that we're creating uh, useful. Here doesn't seem very useful at all. So, White would really need to know his different Chiseki and pick something different instead. Would the N3 variation out of Q3 be more useful here? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Um, let's see, common mistake in this Chiseki is to go ahead and play here. If you do, congratulations, game over. This is about the worst uh, you could really do. Do you know this, Joseki? Mm-hmm. Yep, 
you definitely have to protect that uh, stone. Now the continuation. And white goes up. Mm -hmm. And now black typically saves his stone, if I recall, because they're now fighting over ladders. This could be uh, beneficial to white. He's getting a bit more influence. Yeah. Oh, wait, M5 next? Um, it's an interesting choice. But yeah, clearly, uh, what's happening here is white's getting influence, essentially, to go back and attack these two stones. So, once again, it's something that perhaps uh, Black might not have uh, been too interested in playing. If we change these stones around, then it's a little bit better for Black, because White really can't use the influence that he's gaining here. So, this seems like he was just inviting complication that he couldn't control. Big difference. So I would say this might not be the best variation. So that there's too much complication here that could go uh, badly. Um, let's see, I have no idea what the other question was that I wanted to address. No problem. Something else, as opposed to the pincer, that someone had some question about that is long since off my chat list, it seems. Oh, someone has a double approach. Yeah, what White's going to really want to do is just get Zente here, and then follow up his move. Here's an interesting question regarding this, though. Does anyone know actually how to handle this? There's something that I usually see here that's typically wrong. Mm, as white. Typically, as uh, Basilican just said, I do see this a lot. I see this to the extent of every other move, which is not good. Too many people don't realize there's alternatives here. G4 would be my first move, yes. Yes, for white. G4 would be my preference. Because there is Jiseki here that it seems not a lot of people know. White gets to make a nice flexible shape here, some influence, while black connects. All too often, people drop down and are unable to use any of this. Because what are they going to do now? Jump up? Alright, who cares? Can extend. Are you going to lean on this? Alright, cool, we can still live. That's to be a lot more flexible than uh, this tends to be a lot more flexible than simply dropping down. If you drop down, then you have troubles. Yeah, if you're pl if you were in the middle of a sand rinse, say things might be a little bit different. Yeah, but here you have no other stones to back you up. If you create this wall, well, you've got to use it somehow. And you can't say, I'm going to pincer you, because that's too far away. These three stones are nowhere near immortal. They're going to immediately be attacked as black comes out. So your next move here is a bit of a stumper. Uh, I was uh, hadn't at, looked at the uh, questions yet. If black did not play Tiseki, but continue on the bottom... I believe Bayard is asking that if black plays on the bottom instead of pulling up to c4. Oh. Here? Uh, 
Ah. Or G3. What? Or G3 or ignore and bottom right. Um, well, I'm going to deal with this one for the moment. In this case, dropping down might not be the best choice, because you can be cut. Surely there's no problems here, right? Are you going to spoil this? Oh, someone did spoil it. Indeed. We can't play this way. If we try, we are in trouble. This gets very, very messy. Because suddenly, the corner... Uh, it's hard to recommend this, because... Stones are getting killed all over the place. I mean, the corner's gonna die, but... Everything's been destroyed. Uh, truthfully, I might decide to go back and do this instead. Because this is something that we can actually go ahead and... get back on the familiar ground with. Because this is a Jiseki that I'm sure Bazilikan knows, since he uh, uses this a lot in his San Rensei games. And your basic fight ensues. We have cutting stones that need to live. You need to study just like addiction. You need additional study besides Kogos. It's not in there? I thought Kogos was fairly expansive nowadays, so people kept uh, editing to it. And then, of course, this is wrong, because this just gets way too good for white. But we've pretty much left the uh, Chinese theme behind now, so I think I'm going to uh, end this lecture here. Um, next time. I'm probably going to go ahead and review another professional game before going back to another uh, set Fuseki. There are a few more that we can go over. Um, for example, the Kobayashi, though we don't really see the Kobayashi very much. I'll probably go over different... <laughs> that'll be an interesting one. I'll probably actually go over what happens when... black and closes, because there's a lot of new variations here that a lot of you probably haven't seen or you're not or you're not familiar with. So I'm sure everyone knows R10, but that we don't see very much. Now we see tons of variations around R14. So I'll probably go over those. <laughs> no, I am not going to go all Lee Sedol and decide to go over our five variations. He's just crazy. Um, one last question on the mini Chinese, sure. Alright, we have... Is there a way to simplify R9 on the mini Chinese? Simplify R9. So we go this. We... Oh, is there an easy way to simply R9? To attach? Um, <clears throat> in this case... Uh, let's see. What's what I going to do here? Hane, I guess. And then I am assuming that you're going to pull back. At this point, white's going to connect. I think I've seen this variation before. Not in a while, but yeah, I think this was... I think this was... Uh, yeah, I think this was playable for a while. I'm not sure if they've changed their mind, but it seems like an okay variation, simply because... Do they play some that's uh, confusing you? Is there a variation in particular that you had in mind that uh, you weren't sure how to respond with?
because this does seem nice and simple. They go in the bottom right soon after. Yeah, after this, they decide to go ahead and invade you. With R3. Hmm. Before the top right. Okay, now you're starting to confuse me because you're um, reminding me of uh, this variation. And I'm not certain about uh, who you're playing, but they might be confused on their variations. They might have this one in mind, but have the placement of their stones a little bit uh, off. Or they might simply be very good with probes. It's hard to tell, depending on the game. Uh, tell you what, I will review one of those games for you, and I will get... Alright. Uh, if you want, I can review one of those games for you and get back to you. Uh, but I'm going to end my lecture here. So, thank you everyone for dropping by. Uh, I hope you all learned a little something.